Hi, Matthew here. I'm going to talk you through this Leaving Cert Maths question. It's challenging, but hopefully with my help, you'll be able to understand and answer the question. So let's get started. Question five, which is a 30 mark question on trigonometry. So part A of the question is worth five marks and it wants us to derive the formula sine 2a is equal to 2 sine a cos a. Whenever you see a question like this where we're asked to derive a formula which involves the trigonometric ratios, I'd always go to page 14 or page 15 of my formula and tables book as this is always going to be a massive help. So let's have a look. So we're going to use this formula here on page 14. This tells us that sine a plus b is equal to sine a cos b plus cos a sine b. So let's write that down. But now rather than having sine a plus b, I'm going to have sine a plus a as this will help me work out sine 2a. So that means that sine a plus a is equal to sine a cos a plus cos a sine a. Now we know that a plus a is going to give us 2a, so that means that sine 2a is equal to sine a cos a plus cos a sine a. However, sine a cos a is the same as cos a sine a, so that means it's equal to 2 sine a cos a. So there we have it, we've derived the formula that sine 2a is equal to 2 sine a cos a. That's our answer for part a, and now we're going to have a look at b part 1, and b part 1 is worth 10 marks. So it says, using the formula given in A, solve the equation sine 2x minus cos x is equal to zero in the interval x between zero degrees and 360 degrees. So we know that sine 2x is going to be equal to 2 sine x cos x, as that's what we derived in part A. So let's write that down instead. Both of these terms have cos x as a common factor, so I'm going to factorise that as cos x outside of 2 sine x minus 1. And now I can put both multiples, so that's cos x and 2 sine x minus 1, with both of those equal to 0, and then solve for x. So if cos of x is equal to 0, that means that cos is going to be positive, and we know that cos is positive in the first and fourth quadrants which means that the value for x we get must be in either the first or the fourth quadrant. So then we're going to say that x is equal to cos inverse of zero. So let's see what that is. So just make sure that your calculator is in degrees here, and then you're going to click shift and then cos to get cos inverse, and then zero, and we get 90. So that means that x is equal to 90 in the first quadrant, and we know that the value for x we get has to be in the first and the fourth. So then 90 in the first quadrant is still 90. So we're going to write x is equal to 90. So that's x in the first quadrant, 90 degrees. And to work out x in the fourth quadrant, you just take away whatever x is in the first quadrant away from from 360, so 360 minus 90 degrees will give us 270 degrees. So that means that x is equal to 90 degrees and 270 degrees. So then on the right hand side we have 2 sine x minus 1 is equal to 0. So I'm going to plus 1 to both sides to get 2 sine x is equal to 1. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 2, get sine x is equal to a half. So this is positive, and we know that sine is positive in the first and second quadrants. So sine x is equal to a positive number, which means that we have to work out the values for x, which will give us a positive sign. And we know that sine is positive in the first and the second quadrants. So whatever value of x we get, we must get it in the first and second quadrants. So to work out our first value of x, we're going to say that x is equal to sine inverse of a half, and sine inverse of a half is equal to 30. So it's 30 degrees in the first quadrant, and 30 degrees in the first quadrant, to find out what that is in the second quadrant, you take it away from 180. So 180 minus 30 degrees is going to be 150. So there we get x is equal to 30 degrees and 150. 50 degrees. So now to explain how to find out what it is in the first quadrant, second quadrant, third or fourth quadrants, I'm just going to draw a little diagram. So whatever you find the angle to be, which I'm going to call theta, that's just what it is in the first quadrant. Then to find theta in the second quadrant, you do 180 minus theta. To find out what it is in the third quadrant, you do 180 plus theta. And to find out what it is in the fourth quadrant, you do 360 minus theta. And to know which ratio is positive in which quadrant, you start off with the bottom right hand side, and that's going to be cos is positive. Then they're all positive in the first quadrant, which is the one on the top right. Sine is positive up here and then tan is positive down here and as I said they're all positive in the first quadrant so it's important to know that when you're doing questions such as this. So that's our answer for B part 1 and now we're going to have a look at B part 2 which is worth 5 marks. So the diagram shows parts of two trigonometric graphs. So we have y is equal to sine 2x and y is equal to cos of x. So now we have to use our solutions from part 1 to write down the coordinates of the point P. So in part 1 we've got x is equal to 30 degrees, 90 degrees, 150 degrees and 270 degrees. However we can see that p falls between 90 and 180 and there's only one value of x that we have that's between 90 and 180 and that's 150 which means the x value must be 150 and now we have to find the corresponding y value so to do that we're going to use either of the equations either y is equal to sine 2x or y is equal to cos of x both of them will give you the same answer i'm going to pick y is equal to cos of x so i'm going to write down y is equal to cos of 150 as we know that x is equal to 150 so then cos 
cos of 150 is equal to minus the square root of 3 over 2. So therefore, the coordinates of P are 150 degrees minus square root of 3 over 2. And that's our answer for B part 2. And now we're going to have a look at part C, which is worth 10 marks. So we're shown a sector OAB of a circle with center O. C is the midpoint of the line OB. And the measure of the angle OAB is in radians. And that's important. So we're told that the area of the triangle OAC is equal to a quarter of the area of the sector OAB. So now it's asking us to show that theta is equal to 2 sine theta. So let's try this now. So we're going to call the radius of the sector OR. So that means OA and OB are both equal to OR. And now we're going to look at the formula for the area of the sector. This is on page 9 of the formula and tables book. Now remember, theta is in radians. So that means that the area is equal to half or squared theta. This formula here. So therefore, the area of the sector is equal to half or squared theta. And now we're going to write down the area of the triangle AOC. So the formula we're going to use is the following formula, which is on page 16 of your formula and tables book. And it's the first formula here. So half AB sine C. So it's half the length of AB and then times by the sine of the angle between both those lines. Let's see what that is in our case. So half and then our A is going to be the distance between AO and our B is going to be the distance between O and C. That's going to be sine theta as theta is the angle between AO and OC. So we know that the distance between A and O is equal to the radius, which is OR. And we also know that the distance between O and C is equal to half the radius, so OR over 2. So let's write this into the formula now. So multiplying this out, we're going to get 1 over 4 or squared sine theta. Now remember, we know that the area of the triangle AOC is equal to a quarter of the area of the sector, which means that a quarter or squared sine theta is going to be equal to a quarter times by half or squared theta. So the one over four on both sides will just cancel and the or squared on both sides will just cancel. So we'll be left with sine theta is equal to half theta. Now I'm going to multiply both sides by two. This will get rid of the fraction on the right hand side and I'll get two sine theta is equal to theta. And that's what I wanted it to show. That's my answer for part C of the question, which is the final part of the question and the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching and I hope I helped.